This is a SnapEd New York video presentation. Hello everyone, my name is Wendy Beckman and I'm a registered dietitian with the New York State Office for the Aging and SnapEd New York. Thanks for joining me today on What's Cooking with NYSOPA. Today, I'm going to be making applesauce brownies. We'll be posting the link to the recipe below, and the recipe can also be found on the SnapEd New York website at www.snapedny.org. This recipe has applesauce in it, and it replaces some of the oil that you would normally use when making brownies. We'll also be using some egg whites. Both of these substitutions help to cut down on the amount of saturated fat in the brownies, but I promise they're still delicious. Each serving has 74 calories, 2.4 grams of total fat with only 0.6 grams of saturated fat, 1.7 grams of protein, and one gram of fiber. If you wanna increase the fiber content, you can use whole wheat pastry flour instead of all-purpose flour, and that's what I'm gonna be doing today. If you wanna make that substitution, make sure that you use whole wheat pastry flour, not regular whole wheat flour. Regular whole wheat flour will make the brownies too dense and you might not get a good result. Of course, this recipe is a great dessert and I am a big fan of brownies, so I tried this recipe myself and I was pleased with the flavor and the texture. Before we get into the recipe, let's look at the MyPlate graphic. This recipe covers the fruits and vegetables section of MyPlate because it contains applesauce. You want to make half your plate fruits and vegetables at each meal. My plate is a graphic representation of what our plate should look like every time we sit down to eat. Adding some applesauce means that you can increase your fruit intake while still having dessert. Apples are a great source of fiber, vitamin C, and potassium. Many Americans don't get enough fiber or potassium in their diets. Adding some applesauce to these brownies adds fiber and it cuts down on some of the calories in this chocolatey treat. Depending on the size of the serving, of course, with only 74 calories per serving, you're looking at a lot less calories than a traditional brownie. Remember that everything you eat and drink over time matters. You wanna find your healthy eating style and maintain it for a lifetime. The right mix can help you be healthier now and in the future. So let's start making these applesauce brownies. Remember that you can find this recipe and lots of tips on how to save time, save money, and eat healthy on the Snapped New York website at www.snappedny.org. Now, remember to wash your hands with soap for at least 20 seconds or use an alcohol-based hand sanitizer before you start cooking. Let's look at the ingredients for this recipe. Here I have a half of a cup of the whole wheat pastry flour, and like I said, you can use all-purpose flour too if you want to. Here I have a half of a cup of unsweetened baking cocoa. You're also going to need a half of a teaspoon of baking powder. And here I have a half of a cup of sugar. You also need an eighth of a teaspoon of salt and two tablespoons of canola oil. I have four ounces of applesauce, basically a half a cup. When choosing applesauce, look for the varieties without sugar or corn syrup added. You also will need two teaspoons of vanilla extract. I have one whole egg, lightly beaten, and I have two egg whites that I've also lightly beaten. Now, the first thing we need to do is preheat our oven to 350 degrees, and my oven has already been heating up for a while. Next, we have to prepare the baking dish. So you're gonna spray an eight by eight baking dish with cooking spray, or you can add about a teaspoon of vegetable oil and then spread it around the bottom and the sides of the pan, and that's actually what I've done today. So first, we're gonna prepare the batter. We're gonna combine all the dry ingredients in a large bowl. We're gonna add the flour first. There's that. And then we're gonna add the cocoa. So that goes in next. Next, we're gonna need some baking powder. And after that, let's get the spatula out here to make sure that we get everything in the bowl. After that, we're gonna add some sugar. So half a cup of sugar. And then the last dry ingredient is the salt. And you need the salt in there to react with the baking powder so it rises while it's baking. Now, the next thing you're gonna do is mix all of those ingredients together. I'm gonna to use a whisk here. You can use a fork, it doesn't really matter. 
I'm going to mix all of that together. You can see the cocoa and the flour mixing together. All right, that's perfect. Now, in this smaller bowl, I'm going to put the wet ingredients. So we're going to start by adding the oil. So let's put the canola oil in, bit in there first. And then we're going to put the applesauce in. So I'm going to need the spatula for that. Half of a cup of applesauce. Let's just mix that around. Then we're going to put the vanilla in the bowl. Oops. And then we're going to add our eggs. So we're going to put the eggs in there, the whole egg and the egg white. And like I said, by using egg whites, there's means that there's still protein uh, that you need for baking in the recipe, uh, but it's got a little bit less saturated fat in it. So there's that. And now we can put all of the rest of the wet ingredients in there. I already have the applesauce in, and now we're going to add the rest of these ingredients in here as well. So let's pour that in. And then you can just use a spatula or a whisk or whatever to just fold all of those ingredients together, the dry and the wet ingredients together. And you just want to mix it just until it's combined. You want to over mix it. That can sometimes make your baked goods just a little bit too tough. So to keep them nice and light, you just want to stir them just enough so that all of the ingredients are combined. And that is looking pretty good. You gotta make sure you get all the dry ingredients off the bottom of your bowl here. Still gotta mix that in. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now, so the last thing you're gonna do is put your batter into the baking pan. You're gonna bake it for about 20 minutes. The recipe calls for an eight by eight pan, which is kind of small, so the recipe is really perfect for only one or two people, but if you wanna use a larger pan, you're just gonna double or triple the recipe. Let me get my eight by eight pan here. So there's that. We're gonna pour the brownie batter in there. Make sure that we got everything in there. It's best to use a spatula to make sure that you scrape the bowl pretty well. And let's get the rest of that out of there as well. And then you want to spread it evenly along the bottom of the pan. There's that. There we go. All right, that's looking pretty even. And there's already oil coating the bottom of the pan. It's going to help you to remove the brownies later. Now, I had to bake my brownies for about 20 minutes or 25 minutes. The recipe called to bake the brownies for about 20 minutes. I had to add an extra five minutes. Everyone's oven is a little bit different, so it depends. Make sure that you check them after about 20 minutes, and then you can add another five or 10 minutes if you want to. I'm gonna add some chocolate chips on the top of mine. You can add walnuts or some other kind of nuts if you want to, um, but I think the, the chocolate chips add just a little more flavor in there. All right, and that's looking pretty good. After you've baked them all up, you want to let the brownies cool completely and then cut them into about 16 squares. Now, don't forget, you can find this recipe on the SnapEd New York website at www.snapedny.org. Now, let me show you some brownies that I made previously. And here they are. They smell really good, nice and chocolatey. And you know when you're eating these brownies, you can include some healthy fruit into your eating pattern. I hope this recipe gave you some more ideas on how to incorporate more fruit into your diet. They actually come out a lot like a cake brownie, not really uh, dense or, or fudgy like that, but nice and fluffy. Mm, and they really are delicious. Don't forget to join me next month when I'll share more tips on how to save time, save money, and eat healthy. In July, I'll be making a quinoa and black bean salad. It's a great dish to bring to a backyard barbecue. I'll be back with another edition of What's Cooking with Nice Sofa on Friday, July 26th at 12.30 p.m. right here on the New York State Office for the Aging Facebook page and the New York State Office for the Aging YouTube channel. If you watch the show on YouTube, don't forget to like and subscribe. Remember to hit the notification bell so that you're notified every time new content gets posted. 
This presentation was funded by the U.S. Department of Agriculture. This institution is an equal opportunity provider. Have a great day and I'll see you next time. Thank you for joining us today. We know the healthy choice isn't always the easiest choice, but small changes can make a big difference. Start today by getting involved with SNAP Ed New York. This program is free for those who qualify or receive SNAP benefits. We want to help you save time, save money, and eat healthy. Learn how SNAP Ed can make a difference in your life. For more information and to find your local program, visit snaped.ny.org. This material is funded by USDA's Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program. SNAP, this institution is an equal opportunity provider. Hi, I'm registered dietitian Wendy Beckman, host of What's Cooking with NYSOFA. Over the past two years, I've had the opportunity to share healthy, nutritious recipes with you on the show. I work for the New York State Office for the Aging, and thanks to a partnership with SNAPED New York, our nutrition team reaches hundreds of thousands of older New Yorkers each year. So why a cooking program? 60% of health costs and related issues have nothing to do with health, but instead have to do with individual behaviors like our food choices and physical activity. The recipes we feature are nutritionally appropriate for older adults, meeting critical nutrition requirements for healthy aging. What I bet you don't know is that this show is only part of a larger effort. To help me explain what our nutrition team at the New York State Office for the Aging does and what a registered dietitian is, here is registered dietitian Lisbeth Irish. A registered dietitian is a professional who has training and education in food and nutrition. To become an RD, you must complete certain requirements, including a minimum of a bachelor's degree from an institution that's accredited by the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics. You must also pass a national examination and meet continuing education requirements. What does that mean? As RDs, we are qualified to offer accurate advice about nutrition, and we can help answer your questions about how diet can affect your health. At NYSOFA, the registered dietitians handle many tasks. This includes hosting two online programs aimed at helping older New Yorkers make better nutrition choices. These programs are What's Cooking with NYSOFA, which is our monthly cooking demonstration, and a Facebook Live program that I host called Ask the Experts, Nutrition Edition. In the months ahead, be on your lookout for it. We'll be sharing your questions and our experts' answers about nutrition and health. New episodes of Ask the Experts, Nutrition Edition debut the second Friday of each month on Facebook and YouTube. As Lizbeth explained, registered dietitians at NYSOFA handle many tasks, including food safety at congregate meal sites, educational materials, and outreach. In the meantime, please don't miss an episode of either show produced by our team, What's Cooking with NYSOFA and Ask the Experts Nutrition Edition. Every episode is uploaded to YouTube, and you'll find the archive shows there. Do you have a question about foods? Or do you have a particular health issue that you'd like to improve by changing your diet? Tune in to Ask the Experts Nutrition Edition every second Friday at 1 p.m. We'd love to hear from you. Remember, registered dietitians are the experts in nutrition. Visit for more sound advice about eating healthy on a budget.